Animals have incredible instincts. This injured mama bear brought her dying cub to this man. Then, he did something unbelievable. It was time to pack up his fishing gear. Sean was returning home, but he never expected what awaited him on his way down. Frustrated, Sean just wanted to get home as quickly as possible. The fishing had not gone well at all. The river streams were very strong, and his lines kept getting caught in rocks and debris. It was annoying, and he just wanted to get back to his cabin. So instead of walking along the regular trail, he took a shortcut through the bushes. That was when he got one of the biggest frights of his life. He had just turned a corner when suddenly a massive black bear was right in front of him. The bear was so close, he could see her nose move as she breathed. In order to maintain composure, he focused on the right ways to respond when confronted with a bear. He instinctively raised his arms, making himself look bigger in an attempt to appear more intimidating and less like prey. But he didn't make a lot of noise, as bears might interpret such noises as threats or signs of aggression. She got on her back legs and smelled him. She was seriously close. It was terrifying. But he just tried to remember that a standing bear is normally more curious and not a bear getting ready to attack. But then she sat down and whined. He moved away and was just leaving, but her moans of agony forced him to turn around. That was when he realized that the bear's side had a bunch of cuts with blood coming onto her fur. Her front paw also seemed injured. This could make the situation even more dangerous. But instead of looking like a threat, she just looked defeated and miserable. That made Sean think of something. Earlier in the morning, he had walked past a mother bear and baby playing next to the river. He didn't disturb them, but it was the best part of his day for sure. This was likely the same bear. But what had happened for her to get injured? And where was the baby? That thought made Sean jump into action. He had a hunch that he had to make sure of. He ran to the river as fast as he could, the bear following him. It should have been scary to have a bear at your feet. But somehow, it felt like they were working together instead of Sean being in danger. It was very weird, but Sean quickly scanned the river, but he saw no baby bear at all. Then, suddenly, he saw a dark head pop out of the water. He kept his eyes focused on the area. On the same spot, the baby bear's head popped up again. It looked like he was holding on to some rocks. But the water kept flowing over him. He wouldn't be able to hold on for much longer. His mama bear had probably tried to save him and got injured herself. Knowing she wasn't going to reach him on time, she went to look for help and found Sean. There was no way that Sean was going to allow the bear cub to drown right in front of him. But after being in the water himself earlier in the day, he knew just how strong the streams were. If he went in without being prepared, he was just going to drown too. He needed a plan. He quickly got his fishing gear and the rope that held his fishing basket trap. He tied the rope around himself, leaving a long piece in front of him. Then, he tied the other end to a tree next to the river. Without giving himself time to think, he jumped right into the water. The current in this part of the river was even stronger than he thought. With all of his strength, Sean swam towards the rocks where he last saw the cub. Sean's experience as a Navy SEAL came in handy because a weaker swimmer would not make it. He got closer to some of the rocks and then held on to see exactly where the cub was. For moments, all he could hear was the growling and moaning noises of the mother bear on shore. Desperately pacing back and forth, the mother bear seemed extremely worried, but she knew better than to venture into the raging water again. All her hopes of getting back her cub rested on this strange man whom she had coincidentally met. Sean was breathing hard and he was a bit disoriented. At that point, he wasn't entirely sure if he made it to the bear cub. He hoped he was getting closer. With the rushing water constantly coming over him each time he surfaced for air, it was hard to tell where he was. He took a second to figure out in which direction he needed to swim next. When he saw the little bear's head popping up close by in front of him, he was overjoyed. He could just swim straight downstream and he would be able to grab the cub. When he got ready to change direction, disaster struck. The cub lost his grip on the rocks and was swept into the river. His head disappeared into the dark water within a split second. Sean jumped off and swam with all his might. If he lost the little bear at that point, then he was probably gone forever. The bear went under and it looked like he had stopped struggling at all. It didn't look good. 
Sean swam after him, but the rope was getting tight. They were reaching the end of the rope. Sean had to act immediately or it was all over. As the bear's head went under the water again, Sean grabbed him just in time. He was worried that the baby bear was going to struggle or scratch him, but the bear just lay limp in his arms. They suddenly jerked back and the rope was pulled tight. It was lucky that Sean had a strong grip on the cub or he would have lost him back into the water. He needed to get them back onto shore before they were both completely exhausted. But to do that, he would need both his arms to swim. He used the piece of rope that he left in front of him and tied it to the baby bear. It took a few tries since he was treading water and holding onto the cub, but eventually the baby was secure. Now, Sean could put all his strength into getting them to safety. It helped him that the cub was lying motionless, but at the same time, it was a big problem too. The cub was in serious trouble and he might already have been too late to save him. What would happen if he reached the mother bear with a cub that was no longer alive? It would be a tragedy for the bear's mom, but it could be disastrous for Sean. But he couldn't focus on that at the moment. All his energy had to go towards getting them to safety. He could feel his own energy waning, and it was just the adrenaline that was allowing him to continue on. He swam with all his might towards the shoreline. He didn't have to get back to the spot where he went in, he just needed to get to the side. So the swim was much shorter, but it didn't feel like it. The cub was heavy, and although the rope was helping him a lot, he still needed to do all the hard work. His arms and back were on fire. He didn't know how much more he could endure. But then, suddenly, his feet touched the ground. He was in shallow water. He was so focused on staying in motion that he didn't realize that they were almost there. He could pick up the cub and walk out of the water. The mother bear was coming towards them at a massive speed. For such a massive, not to mention injured animal, she sure was moving fast. He just had to get the rope of the cub before she got to them. He didn't even have the time to check on the cub before she grabbed him and ran away. But Sean didn't have the strength to move. He fell to the ground and pulling off the rope just lay there breathing. He couldn't imagine doing anything else that would take any sort of energy for the rest of the day. But sometimes we can surprise ourselves with what we are capable of. It wouldn't be long before his next challenge would reach him. He was watching the sky, barely able to catch his breath when suddenly he again heard the now familiar moans of the mother bear. But for some reason, they sounded even more sad and desperate now. He sat up just as the injured mama bear brought the baby back to him. He was limp and didn't seem to move. Shockingly, the sad mother didn't seem aggressive. He had gained her trust. She put the baby next to him and then moved away. It was almost like she understood that Sean had rescued the cub from drowning before and hoped he would do it again. But that didn't mean Sean actually knew how to help the cub. He put his head to the cub's chest and listened. He heard a heartbeat. It was great news, but the cub still wasn't breathing. He was clearly dying and his mother put all her trust in this strange human to save him. After all that he had gone through to save the cub, Sean sure wasn't giving up at that point. He didn't know what he was supposed to do, but he went on instinct. If a human was in the same situation, he would start CPR. And that's what he did. He had never used the technique before on an animal, but it was better than nothing. It was really weird trying to push breath into a cub's lungs. It felt like there was no movement for ages, but he just kept on going. He could have been performing CPR for only a few seconds, or it could have been hours. He had lost all track of time by then. All he knew was that his arms had lost all feeling and he was going numb. But then, suddenly, the cub made little coughing noises and he started to move. It was a miracle. The cub was breathing. The mother bear saw the movement and quickly came closer. She called to her baby and he faintly called back. Sean was exhausted, but he used the little strength he had left to wisely get out of the way of their happy reunion. They had been through so much together, but these were still wild animals. He couldn't help but smile as the mother turned the baby in every direction. She was checking him out, but it almost looked like she was scolding him at the same time. It made Sean think that this might have been how his own mother would have reacted. Worried at first, and then angry he put himself in danger. It seems that maternal love is the same for all species. It was a wonderful picture, but one that wouldn't last very long. They were so close to having a happy ending to the day when something even more shocking happened. The mother took a few steps towards the forest when suddenly she started to sway dangerously. 
Sean caught her eye just as she turned around and fell down with a massive thump. The baby was crawling over her, but she didn't move. Sean ran closer to look, and only then did he see that the bits of blood that he had seen on her fur were much worse now. She was covered in blood. The gashes must have been a lot worse than he had realized. It seemed like she also just kept going out of fear and adrenaline, and now that her baby was alive and safe, she gave in completely. The only problem was Sean had run out of ideas on how to help. He was still cautious to go too close to her, and he couldn't see where the wounds were because of her thick fur. But even if he did manage to stop the blood, she had lost so much already, she would need a lot more care than he knew how to provide. Sean couldn't believe it. He had saved the cub just to watch him become an orphan right before his eyes. He didn't have a phone with him to call for help. His cabin was too far, and at that stage, his entire body was cramping up. It would take him too long to get there. It looked like this mind-blowing day was sadly going to end in the worst possible way. It was heartbreaking to watch as the little cub tried to play with his mom. At one point, he even seemed to be trying to wake her, but it wasn't working. Then, Sean heard something. It sounded like a pickup truck. He called out, and suddenly a few forest rangers surrounded him. Some hikers had seen him earlier when he was saving the cub in the river. They ran until they found cell service to call the forest rangers in the area. They came out as quickly as they could. They had a bear-sized crate with them, and since the mama bear was non-responsive, they could work on her without fear. They put some bandages on her wounds, trying to stop her from losing any more blood. Then, they quickly loaded her into the crate. The baby went willingly with its mom. Then the team rushed the bears to the nearest wildlife hospital to be cared for. Thankfully, one of the rangers stuck around and gave Sean a ride back to his cabin too. His body was going to feel the impact of his heroics for at least a few days. He had never been as happy to miss a hike in his life. But Sean's own discomfort didn't really matter. He just hoped that the clinic was able to help the mama bear. Without her, rehabilitating and returning the baby to the wild wouldn't be easy. The next day, he went to visit them. He couldn't get close, but they allowed him to see the two bears inside their temporary enclosure. The mama had big patches of fur shaved off, and her scars looked horrible. Sean couldn't believe that she had held on for as long as she did. The baby was still really weak from his ordeal too, so they were keeping him quiet too, allowing him to rest and recover. They kept the two of them together in one smaller enclosure. There wasn't a lot of room to move, but that kept the baby quiet. The mother had a lot of challenges. She even got an infection in some of the wounds. They had to fight hard to get her strong. But through it all, her baby was with her. That seemed to give her the strength to get better. This little family had been through so much, but somehow both of them were going to make it and survive. It was incredible. The baby was starting to get rowdy and they needed more space to spread out. It was time to move them to a bigger enclosure. The baby could play without being on top of his mom all day. She could get some space and rest up. They stayed there until they were both fully healed. Then, it was time to let them go back to their real home, the forest. Sean went to visit them at the wildlife hospital almost every day during the recovery, and he was really invested in the mom and baby. He couldn't wait to see them back in their natural habitat. The rescue team made their release plan, and they let Sean know. He met the team at the release point higher up in the forest. It was an amazing moment. As soon as the cage doors open, the mama bear ran off towards the forest. The baby stood still for a moment and looked at them, but when she called him, he ran to her. Sean had to bite back tears. He was very proud that he had the opportunity to save this little family, even if it was slightly sad that he would never see them again. Or so he thought. A few weeks later, Sean went out onto his porch to drink his morning coffee when a movement in front of the house caught his eye. A mother bear and her cub were chilling in the sun at the edge of the forest. They didn't get too close, but when she turned, she had pieces of fur that were much shorter than the rest. They were his bear friends. From then on, they often saw each other at the river, and although everyone kept their distance, they had a special bond that united them for life. And thankfully, they never underestimated the river and its power again. Thanks for watching. Join us again for even more incredible stories.